you have a prayer request that you would like to share, or maybe you have a question about the Bible, here's an opportunity for you to share your request or get biblical answers. Stay tuned for a live call-in program entitled Prayer and Answers. Good afternoon. Welcome to another Saturday edition of Prayer and Answers. I hope that you are having a wonderful and blessed weekend. I hope that you've had an opportunity this last week to encounter God in some way. Maybe you've seen him move in your work environment, maybe in family situations, whatever, but some of your prayers have been answered. My name is Randy Smith, and I have the joy and the privilege of being a host of this weekly radio call-in talk show. And with me, once again, is my co-host, Dr. Steve Kovac. Steve, how are you doing this afternoon? Doing well, Randy. Well, that's great. I want to give out the phone numbers right away. The phone number here, we want you to call in. I want you to be a part of the, the program here. The phone number is 779-0016. Once again, 779-0016. Or if you'd like to text in a question or prayer request that we can uh, then read over the air, phone number for texting is 915-271-5944, 915-271-5944. Now, before we get into uh, much of a uh, conversation, uh, Steve, I want to give a shout out, a hello to one of uh, our most faithful listeners. She has been listening, I think, if I remember right, ever since the program first began way back when Jay Gilliland and I were hosting this. Uh, her name is Gay Alexander, and uh, Gay fell last week and broke uh, her her leg, and so last Saturday, she was not able to uh, to to listen in the way that she normally does in the comfort of her home. Um, but she's been listening ever since we've begun, which I don't even know how long that is. Um, but I want to say hello and and welcome uh, back to Gay Alexander, and we're glad that you're home and and doing well and our prayers are that you would recover quickly and so steve could we just start the show here by praying for for gay and for her recovery would you mind sure let's pray Uh, gracious lord as we open this show we want to acknowledge uh, your presence and your goodness uh, to your people and we want to thank you for gay and we thank you for her life and and for ministering to her and helping her to recover. And we pray that you would continue to help her um, in that process, uh, to give her strength and encouragement and uh, help her to be back on her feet uh, quickly. And we just thank you for blessing her and we thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Um, Have you ever met anyone before named Gay, Steve? Can you remember? Yeah. It's a name that generally um, isn't used a lot today, but... It, did it used to be? It used to be a fairly common yeah. name. So I've, I've met three or four people yeah. with that name. She felt very called um, to be one of the greeters at the church, but it didn't work out because when people would come in, she'd say, hi, I'm gay. And it just <laughs> <laughs> it didn't... It, we had to find another ministry for her. It just... Didn't, for some reason, didn't work out. I want to uh, invite our, our listeners, if you would call in with any prayer requests that you have. Uh, um, we found that the Lord uh, is so faithful in answering prayers. And then in, in James, it's uh, the way James put it. I love it. it, it James is, is very straightforward, and he says, you have not because you ask not. And sometimes we forget to pray. So uh, if you have a prayer request or perhaps uh, you've seen God answer a prayer, we love the testimonies because it encourages others. Oh, he is. Uh, he's still active in our lives today. Look, this person just shared how they saw God answer their prayer, and it encourages others to pray. Uh, so we want to invite you to call in. Maybe you have a, a question on the scriptures or a scripture to read. Um, the Bible tells us that Jesus washes his church with the word, and so any time that we can uh, read scriptures over the air, uh, I, I think it's it's very profitable. And uh, so the phone number again, 7790016. Or if you would like to text in a message, 2715944. I'd like us to uh, look at a passage of scripture in First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four. If you're if you're driving right now, 
and you not in a big rush i saw on my way into the studio that the the freeway was a parking lot basically um really backed up maybe you just tired of fussing with it pull over find a shade tree and uh, pull your bible out and join us for an hour um, first peter chapter 4 starting in verse 7 i want to read verses 7 through 11 listen closely to the word of god and uh, and then uh, tell me what uh, you think about what it's saying first peter chapter 4 verses 7 through the through 11 the end of all things is near therefore be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer above all keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins be hospitable to one another without complaint as each one has received a spiritual gift employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of god whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of god whoever serves is to do so as the one who is serving by the strength which god supplies so that in all things god may be glorified through jesus christ to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever amen you know steve as i looked at this passage of scripture i i think uh, i could not ask for a better four verses to explain and to guide um, in what we have always tried to do with the radio program prayer and answers um, it begins with verse 7 in saying the end of all things is near I, I love that context um, <laughs> picture it like this we're, we're all in this ship and it's sinking together we're all going to sink together in this thing the end of all things is near and because it's all near therefore be of sound judgment and sober spirit now, he could have stopped right there. You know, in other words, okay, the end is near, so you got to be really sharp right now. But he doesn't stop there. He says, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Um, you know, the name of the show is Prayer and Answers. We believe and teach that prayer is powerful and effective, but also that it is a duty it's uh, it's part of the Christian work. Um, I think that prayer accomplishes more in the kingdom and for the kingdom than absolutely any other activity we could be about. And yet prayer, um, sadly, is often the last resource we go to instead of the first. So the end of all things is near. Therefore be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Uh, do you do you find that in your personal walk with the Lord that that prayer is absolutely the best activity you could be involved in for the kingdom? Um, I th I think that prayer is an essential component of what we need to be about. Um, and dealing with the times that we're in, the end of all things is near. And that was said 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Um, Paul says in Romans, salvation is nearer uh, to us than when we first believed. In other words, the end it's closer. Is, is getting closer and closer. And um, we need to keep an eternal perspective. And how best to keep an eternal perspective than to seek God in, in getting his perspective um, and um, trying to understand um, what what uh, God is doing and encountering him and getting that perspective on a daily basis. So prayer does that. I've also found that prayer accomplishes things um, like, for instance, in, in James brings up the example of Jeremiah. I mean, I'm sorry, not Jeremiah, but Elijah. Uh, Israel was in horrible sin. <laughs> Elijah prays that it doesn't rain, and it doesn't rain. His prayers actually accomplished a drought which brought Israel to its knees. Then he prayed that it would rain, and it rained a flood. And James is saying Elijah's a man just like us. His point is that our prayers are able to accomplish um, the same thing. 
uh, I believe that that in response to the the decision that's facing our nation in November and uh, the ripping apart and everything that's going on, I really believe that if prayer meetings were to spring up across the nation, I think it would change things. I believe that prayer um, uh, not only can change things, but I believe God teaches us it's what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, The number of times, you know, I think in the book of uh, Timothy where Paul says, now, first of all, first and foremost, I want men to lift holy hands in prayer. And then he says, praying for the authorities uh, that are over us. First of all, he says. And um, and I, I love it when everything else is taken away and all we have left is prayer because then finally we do it and it changes things. And, and one of the things that's, that's kind of going on and we're talking with Kenny and, and the the difficulty of churches many of them are still not meeting mm-hmm. yes and and you can say well we can pray in our own houses but it's not the same the corporate prayer in the community uh, by meeting and, and and engaging God together yes and and listening to God together and learning together um, is is a really important component, and um, I know that a lot of churches are struggling for a variety of reasons of getting back to worship. Maybe it, their people. I talked to a pastor of a Asian church, and their people don't want to come back yet. Um, and so it's kind of hard to have church if your people tell sure. you um, they don't want to come back yet. And there's different cultural sensitivities and, and reasonings behind these things, but. I think the importance of the church gathering uh, together and praying and and having people uh, get more uh, get out more um, while being safe instead of spending all of your time in your house. Yeah. Um, because that's got to affect them uh, on a much on a, a level that goes beyond the spiritual. Yeah. Um, is really a critical part of this and. And, and so the corporate prayer, if we could engage together and, and re-engage prayer as a priority in the church, as we meet together in the church, I think is very important. Yeah, and it, I, I think that uh, uh, even if it's not the entire church getting together, but you have 10 or 12 people that are, are gathering to pray, uh, it is effective. To, and I, unfortunately, um, there are many who have not maybe have never had a church experience where the only the only resource you had was prayer um i i was very blessed to pastor a church that didn't have two nickels to rub together and to uh live a a life of faith where if we were going to eat god was going to have to provide a miracle And so we learned to pray and everything that we needed, we prayed for. And there was such joy in it because then you had nothing, you would pray, it would arrive and you knew that it had come from your heavenly father and nowhere else. And so you knew that your heavenly father was there and he was actively involved in your world. Um, That living in that fashion may seem terrifying or uncomfortable to some, but uh, but quite frankly, it's actually an abundant life when you have nothing but prayer. You finally are, are so rich. Uh, when you mentioned that about, you know, you were talking to an Asian pastor and his people don't want to come back to church. The first thing that raised up in my mind <laughs> was I would certainly open the church then and get, let God give me some new people. <laughs> Be like, they don't want to go to come to church. Well, then I'm certainly going to open it. Uh, If I were a church member and the pastor was like, you know, didn't want to open the church, I'd be like, maybe it's time to get a new pastor. Um, But let's let's get the let's get the church open because our nation uh, is in desperate need of God's people to pray. I don't know why God chose to do it that way. I can I can see some reasons, but he has just decided 
that he doesn't do stuff unless we pray and that when we do pray he does stuff you know one of the things that i was reflecting on last week steve as i was in another prayer meeting because we do we have nightly prayer meetings i was thinking about how desperate the situation was last december when you and i first started uh caught warning uh the church of what was coming um and at that time uh it looked like there you know there was there was very little hope and now we are seeing a great pushback against the powers of evil we're seeing church members praying and we're seeing um, american citizens going wait a minute we're not going this direction we're seeing a rising up uh, of godliness um, in various quarters that we had not seen before and personally i believe it's because we're praying i think it's because we're praying that christians are reviving um, and, and you're starting to see a, a hear a rumbling in the distance of revival. I, I think a lot of this is, is created in some sense by desperation. Yes. As this culture has is gradually being yeah, decimated, yeah. now everybody can see. And they're afraid. See the effects. They're that afraid. Even though it was underneath, it was still happening in yeah. the past. But now it's right up front. Yeah. And you can see it in the streets and you can see it in the economy and you can yeah. see it in the in the bread lines or the right. lines for food um, and, and the desperation of the resource. And in the politics of our state capitals. And, yes. Uh, we, we, we really see it there. Um, and what I'm seeing now, just as we used to, we used to talk about this this undercurrent of evil that now has come up. There is an undercurrent now of God's people praying that is yes. just starting to come up. <laughs> and so we get to see this. Yeah, I know I get excited about this stuff, but we get to see this battle between the forces of God and the forces of evil. And I'm looking forward to it because I love watching him just with a twitch of his shoulders, just throw off evil and and um, and be victorious. Our God is is victorious but it does depend on our prayers because he's chosen that it will depend on our prayers and, spe and speaking of that i was just reading on the uh, an email i got that the uh, uh, franklin graham's calling for a day of prayer mm -hmm. on uh saturday september 26 yes and there's going to be gathering at the nation's capital to pray for our country good and uh so i just i hope I that this that. time i hope that this time there will be some repentance mentioned. Yes. Uh, the last day of prayer that I saw that Franklin Graham ca uh, called, there was no word in there at all of God, we've gone wrong, we've done wrong, forgive us. And you don't, you, you can't kill as many unborn babies as we do without needing to repent for that. Um, I, I, I think that, and I did not see anything in the last prayer and the, you know, the, the scripture, uh, uh, scripture that everybody hangs their hat on you know it's when my people humble themselves and call upon my name that's a prayer of repentance that solomon is talking about there and and we we need to repent as a nation for what we've done also i think uh, i think the church needs to repent for becoming consumerist uh, in their religion um for not taking for not taking church seriously and then then there's this this attitude of these con many of these contemporary progressive Christians yes uh, towards troubling. the idea of racism troubling and that we repent from something um, towards uh, a secular idea right <coughs> excuse me and 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 so I was reading this again and this uh, Christianity Today had this article that, that tells us we have to repent for something because there's currently a lot of systemic racism and we have to be responsible for something yeah. when we have when we're not responsible for it let me ask you a not just as an individual but as a church because the church is in, ha, has has gone in a very positive direction and obviously there's a lot to to work on in terms of reconciliation oh, yeah. and that should be the goal reconciliation right not not uh uh, reparations, which is where a lot of these people are going. I, I saw a, a newspaper interviewer interviewing Denzel Washington. I have no idea, you know, what Denzel Washington's 
religious beliefs are. But it was a white newspaper interview interviewing black Denzel Washington and he asked him, he said, What do you what do you think about race relations? And and Denzel Washington <laughs> stops him and he says, Look, 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 you're white or something and I'm black or something and right now you and I are talking, we're having a relationship. This is where it's gotta happen. That you can't you can't march <laughs> this into being and it's not something that any uh, any president can legislate. And then Denzel Washington actually says you cannot legislate love, that this is something that we have to do as individuals. Um, and I think they're forgetting a- another thing when we talk about the, the, the need uh, to apologize. Where, were you, where, where does your family come from, Steve? Um, originally or just in the United States? In the United States, well... Uh, my uh, mother's family's from the Midwest, and they're Dutch primarily. Okay. Uh-huh. And, and my father's family's from Pennsylvania that moved to California, and yeah. they're Hungarian and Jewish. Yeah, okay. I think that maybe people might be forgetting, and I, I'm not saying this as an excuse, but I'd like to bring all of the information out for us to look at. They might be forgetting Abraham Lincoln and something that he said in his second inaugural address when it talks about uh, 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 reparations, he said that our nation spilt so much blood in a four-year war, so much blood, and almost all of our economic wealth was spent in a war paying for slavery, that God would not allow the war to come to end until the last drop of blood and the last piece of wealth was gone to pay for 400 years of slavery. This nation did pay a tremendous price. We're only remembering that there were some people who enslaved others, and we are not remembering that there were some people who paid the ultimate price to free them. And I think both pieces of information, it's why the flag can still wave and we can still uh, look up with it with some pride. Because, yes, it stands for things that are not right, but it also stands for things that are wonderful. And I have not been to every nation on the planet, but you can tell the worth of a nation by which way the people flow when you open the gate. And I, I, I notice they all keep coming here. And so there must be good uh, here that may not be somewhere else. I know that I'm uh, biased in my opinion, but I think that the American flag, um, you know, there there's tatters in it and there's wrong in it. But it, there's also righteousness that has been there and sacrifice. And uh, and maybe we could we could talk about both sides instead of just one. And there's freedom to uh, of religion and freedom that the Christian faith has brought that was a major part of the Civil War uh, the, yeah. even though there were there were Christians who were on the wrong side and and justified slavery yes um, the major abolitionist force was a Christian, was and Christian. Orient- yes. orientation yes and yeah. Abraham Lincoln would always quote scriptures for his reason for 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 wanting the abolition of of, of slavery. It, 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 his he would always quote this one scripture, and he would say, "There is no way that it is right for one man to earn his living off the sweat of another man's brow." And uh, so there is, and he would answer the Southern Christians with that verse: "With how can you?" How can you do this? So, so there is righteousness as well, and of course, the righteousness that I believe is in the United States, its source, is the Christianity that has flourished here, and has has not only flourished here but has been exported across the world. I was hearing um, a Cuban. Uh, I heard that Cuban pastors are calling to American Christians, saying, "Would you come visit Cuba to see the work that your ancestors began?" that it was American Christians that first brought the gospel into Cuba. And so uh, they're, they're actually calling, saying, have you forgotten the work that you began? Well, could we think about the number of nations that are Christian because, or free, because of the, the, the 
the move of Christian missionaries and American armies across the planet. Um, there's a lot of good that God has used America to accomplish in his world as well. Uh, this passage of scripture I was reading at verse 7 says, The end of all things is there, therefore be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Remember I was saying this, the entire four verses to me was like what we try to make this radio show all about. Uh, verse 8 says this, Above all, in other words, of first priority, above all, keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins and one of the things that we try to encourage here in prayer and answer is the reason we we want the callers to call in so badly is because the the individual uh christian from from our listening audience when they call in and they speak as as a lay person to use that term that ministers to the church more than anything Steve and I can say because Steve and I, you know, they look people will look at us and go, well, they're the professionals you know uh, they, th- this is what they do for a living but when, when a person who, who is a lay person calls in and expresses their relationship with God that, that preaches ten times the sermons that Steve and I could ever preach and I want to invite you to participate in that out of love uh, out of love for your brothers and sisters who you've never met, but you know that they're listening. The phone number seven seven nine zero zero one six. Again, it's seven seven nine zero zero one six. We covet your phone calls um, because because your calls and your comments and your prayers and prayer requests are much more powerful and more effective than than what Steve and I can do here. So give us a call seven seven nine. 0016 or you can text me at 2715944 we're going to take a break give you a time uh, to dial and we'll be back in just a moment with more prayer and dancers a friend of mine lives in one of a dozen states that require residents to declare the dollar amount of their out-of-state purchases on their annual state income tax form so the state can collect sales tax on those purchases My friend's accountant says he's the only one of the accountant's clients who makes the annual voluntary disclosure and pays the tax. My friend's motivation for obeying this costly law is a biblical one. The fact that he will appear before Jesus Christ one day to give an account of every word and deed. The future cost is always higher for things that should be done today. This is David Jeremiah encouraging you to get on the road to new life. Discover God's accountability on Route 66. Route 66, driving the word home. Log on to Route66life.com and get your roadmap for life. That's Route66life.com. Route 66, start your journey home today. From an early age, George Gray was different from other kids. His limited vision didn't stop him from making friends, becoming a Boy Scout, and working hard. But he wondered what he could do with his life and what kind of contribution he could make to the world. Don't miss his inspiring story. Another true dramatization coming soon on Unshackled. In many countries around the world, medical care is scarce. Countless millions have no access to safe surgery. Mercy Ships is there to help. Mercy Ships provides free surgeries for the thousands of those who are waiting for surgery at each port. Mercy Ships is bringing services to countries that would otherwise never be able to access those services. Find out how you can help by visiting our website at mercyships.org. That's mercyships.org. And we are back with more prayer and answers. Phone number here, 779-0016. Or you can uh, text in a prayer request or come in at area code 915-271-5944. Um, uh, continuing now in verse 11 of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. just want to touch on this and then we'll kind of move on. It says, whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of God. Uh, you and I, right before we came on the air, we're praying, right? Lord, uh, uh, help us to speak to be your mouthpiece. It's not what we want to say, but what you want to say. And here we see it. Whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterance of God, and whoever 
serves is to do so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And that is our hope for this radio show, Prayer and Answers, that it glorifies God and it strengthens the believers, that the love of Christ can be felt, um, that it encourages and uh, at times rebukes or corrects if, we, if uh, need be. And, uh, and we are very thankful for our listeners um, for joining us each week. One of the things that we'd like to invite you to do, if there's something that you see positive going on, whether it's in your church or in your, your circle of Christian friends, where you see that something uh, is happening now because of all the problems, because of COVID and, and such going on, that you've seen a change, would you be our reporters out there? Would you call in? and uh, let us know about it, whether it's uh, a particular ministry that your church has begun doing or maybe you're starting to see the, the breeze of revival in your church conversation, congregation. Now, you don't need to tell us the name of the church. You can just call in and tell us uh, uh, what, what you're seeing taking place in the last few months that is different from uh, what it used to be. Um, Steve, uh, you go to church in Las Cruces. How are things going over there? Well, pretty, uh, pretty well. We're we're still on our governor's twenty five percent guidelines, um, and the social distancing and limiting singing, mm. and some most churches are, well, a good number of churches are meeting, and a good number, I think, are still not meeting, um, and, and that as we were talking about before, troubles me. Right. Um, but so I, I don't know that it's going, and, and the governor is just going to keep keep us locked down as long as she can. At least that's how I see what she's doing, even though uh, the number of people in the hospital in the entire state of New Mexico with COVID is 65. Yeah. And um, so crazy. she 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 <laughs> she che- keeps changing the goalposts. Yeah. And she's going to keep changing them because I think that she uh, enjoys uh, 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 the power that comes with um, telling restaurants they can't open and there's still no restaurants open unless you have an outdoor space and uh, other things re- remain closed and. Um, they don't seem to be bothered by the damage that this is doing and and it, but the churches that are meeting i think god is working in very very uh uh great ways and and um uh, giving is up but uh, i was seeing something in christianity today that that uh churches that are doing primarily online or relying on online mm. for their services uh, the number of people is down 35 to 40 percent wow. because people, uh, I think they, they use the term zoomed out, and that's no. now a term. <laughs> yeah. And I, I got zoomed out after about a month, Yeah. Um, but I still have to be on it. And, and to, to be honest with you, sometimes it's quite a struggle to, to zoom in. And um, But um, there are some dark clouds that are still out there. Um, but God is at work in 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a in a in a great way, but in a very small way. And you can just see um, how it's positively impacting some churches in some places, yes. Um, and how it's damaging or destroying others. And right. So um, we need to be meeting. We need to be worshiping together, and we need to take our faith uh, seriously, as uh, unless you. Ha- how, you know, many people have a good reason not to come. And right. The, the, but um, for those who can, um, it becomes too easy just to stay at home. Yeah. And, um, Here's one of the, when I, when I speak about prayer uh, and, and when, you, when you really are desperate, uh, <laughs> you really, really start praying. Um, I have an older couple that comes to our church. And I, I love the fact that people who are low risk are coming to church and they're singing. But when I see the older couple coming um, and they, they, they want to be with their brothers and sisters in the Lord worshiping their Savior, 
uh, you got to know that as pastor, I pray so hard <laughs> for their safety. Um, when you, when uh, I'm desperate that God keep them safe. Another thing is because we are open, uh, we have not had one COVID even sickness hit anywhere close to us. And I know that God is doing that. Um, But that could change in a moment. And so, again, in desperation, I'm constantly praying, God, thank you for letting us worship. Thank you for letting us come together. But please um, protect us. And it's not the disease I'm concerned about. I don't want, could you imagine, uh, well, look, the disease is being spread by Jesus's people. I I, I would hate that. Um, But we pray and we pray fervently. And the Lord has been so gracious to us. Uh, I, what I'd love is for the opposite to happen. I would love it if people started going, wow, the one place you can go and not get COVID is the Church of Jesus. Wouldn't that be great that mm-hmm. it's the safest place, you know, that you can that you can go to. But and we pray and we trust in the Lord as we try to walk this walk this out in faith and in common sense. And we had one case um, that came through a person who was working at a uh, uh, at a business, uh, government uh, business, and um, that person was isolated and they quarantined and the person that was close to them was quarantined and someone who had close contact with them, those people were tested and it didn't spread mm. and we fumigated right away yeah. and, and so God protected our yeah. church from that and so when I look at how we do things I still just I mean I still feel like the church is a whole lot safer than Walmart absolutely (laughs) for a variety of reasons I see all kinds of church people that'll go to Walmart but they're afraid to go to church and uh, you know I'm like come on um, let's let's have some common sense now on the other hand I see people who won't go to Walmart too because they're susceptible I mean they have an underlying condition and I respect that and I understand that so anyway, the phone number here seven seven nine zero zero one six. If you'd like to join the conversation, uh, Steve, one of the things that I saw in in our church, um, I'm seeing church members now more uh, interacting more with the people who live on their streets. Um, we have uh, 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 boxes of produce that arrive each Friday, and church members will take one or two boxes um, home with them, and they will find somebody on their street to give this fresh produce to and it's a nice box of of produce and it comes to us from from another christian organization but they're learning the names of the people who live on the street and the people who live on the street are learning the names of of our church members and i've seen um i've seen church members now that that know people who live on their streets and they're it it opens it opens a, a pathway for them to to legitimately pray for them. They start to be, to care about the person who lives a few doors down, uh, and I think th- uh, that's a wonderful move in the right direction. I've also seen some people come to church who haven't who hadn't been in church in decades. Uh, we've had people come that, um, as the world's gone crazy, they they turn to the church and for for a source of answers and for a refuge and uh as they've come to the church they have turned their hearts to god and said hey you know i'm I'm smart enough to see (laughs) that things are bad and that god is and i need to get my life right with god and so that that's been a great encouragement to me too yeah and and one of the things that that uh, we do in, in church and i'm sure your church we follow the rules yeah and so we're we're being good stewards of the opening that we have you have many more privileges in texas than we have in new mexico um but we are good stewards of what we have and we keep people safe right as best we can and 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 um people feel comfortable and then uh, the message can go out and uh, sometimes as you said people haven't gone to church in a while and some of them have been uh cloistered in their house for a while right and uh, you can minister to these people, and we need to be open and available yeah. so that they, they can be ministered to. Yeah. Uh, another thing I found, maybe I can give people a heads up on this. You may be experiencing it and not even realizing that you're experiencing it. 
um, for, for, for example, let's let's talk for a moment about diet, just for a moment as an example. I mean, this isn't a diet show, but just as an example. If a person's eating McDonald's all the time, they tend to have a craving for McDonald's, particularly the French fries. Uh, and there are byproducts that are in McDonald's food that goes into your system and it takes up place there. And you actually end up having a very low energy level, but it's natural. It's the, in other words, it's how I feel every day. Uh, and you'll have cravings for McDonald's french fries. It's the same thing if you eat ice cream. If you eat ice cream, you're going to want ice cream. And you're, you're, you just get accustomed to this is what life feels like. But then if something happens and you can't go to McDonald's for a week or two, all of a sudden your eyes kind of open up, you know, you start feeling better. The french fries, now suddenly the thought of the McDonald's french fries, you're going, yuck. Um, because because you're free from whatever addictive stuff is there. And it doesn't matter what part of your life it is. The same thing with exercising. If you don't exercise, you just feel, you know, fluffy. You're just always fluffy. Um, and this is just what life is. And then when you begin to exercise, all of a sudden you go, wait a minute, my energy level is higher and I feel good. Uh, this is what life is supposed to be like. I had forgotten. Have you ever experienced, you know, like that? Sure. There was times where I couldn't couldn't exercise. I like to exercise yeah. five, six days a week. And, and uh, when I don't, uh, it affects my energy level and it affects how I do things. It affects, right. to some extent, your attitude about sure. things. And, and when, you're, when you're living in that, you know, in, in a negative way, you don't even realize until uh, it's removed from your system. It is the same way with isolating yourself in your house. You may be going, well, this isn't that bad. You know, I'm okay. And not even realize the, how dull your eyes have become. How, um, it, you know, you're comfortable there, but not realizing that life is ebbing away from you uh um and then and then you go to church and all of a sudden you go wait a minute this is i had forgotten this is what life feels like so i want to caution um those of you who have totally isolated yourself and again uh, you may have medical reasons uh for doing so i i understand but others may not others may just be living in fear and if if <laughs> Let me just say this. If you're going shopping at Walmart, can I just suggest that you also attend a church service and social distance? If you feel that, that you're healthy enough to shop or healthy enough to go to a restaurant and eat, you're healthy enough to fellowship with the brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yeah, and you guys are blessed to have restaurants open. But we don't <laughs> have that blessing. Yeah. You would have to rub that in. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, but um, yeah, it, it, people need to, to, to get out and... And meet other people. And meet other people. And that, that relationship aspect of not just for Christians, but in general, uh, is really vital. And it's one of the sad things I'm t teaching online, community college, and I'm not even allowed to meet with my students, even... Uh, in a social distancing way because they don't allow you on campus. Yeah, yeah. I I noticed when we were under, I mean, they didn't want to use the word lock home, I, a lockdown. I think it was called a stay-at-home order. There was a few weeks here in El Paso where we were under a stay-at-home order. <laughs> I guess the people that are on the street where I live are are rebellious by nature, maybe. <laughs> I feel very comfortable there, <laughs> like this home. Um, but I noticed when we were under the stay-at-home order, suddenly our street was filled with kids riding their bicycles, and the people weren't in their houses. They were out talking to each other on the sidewalks. They were social distancing. They were six foot away. But since you couldn't go to the movie theater, you couldn't go to church, you couldn't go anywhere, really, um, all of a sudden, I saw life the way that it was back in the 50s, uh, where people were outside talking to their neighbors, and all of the kids were, 
up and down the street because they couldn't go to the parks and uh, it was good it was better than it had been before COVID had hit and we got to taste that again uh, now we're kind of losing it again I'm seeing people isolating but community is the way that God has made us and we need to be in community um, phone numbers here seven seven nine zero zero one six. We, uh, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but Steve and I are basically just stalling <laughs> right now. We're just talking, not not in order to entertain you, but just because there's nothing worse than dead airspace. Seven seven nine zero zero one six. We'd love for you to join the conversation and just throw your two cents in uh, in here. And uh, if you would like to text me, the phone number is 915-271-5944. And we're going to take a break, and we'll be back in just a moment with more prayer and answers. Billy Graham. God will intervene tonight in your life and in your heart and take you away from those sharks that want to destroy you. Billy Graham just used the idea of sharks as a spiritual metaphor. But for Tiffany Johnson, it was a real shark she needed rescue from while snorkeling in the Bahamas. I felt like I had bumped into something. So when I turned to my right to see what I'd bumped into, I was literally face to face with a shark and he had my whole arm in his mouth. The shark bit off Tiffany's right arm. Today, she takes every opportunity to tell others about what happened and how that strengthened her faith in Jesus Christ. I'm here and I'm alive and I'm able to share the story and see lives impacted through it. There's been so many opportunities to share Jesus. You can impact lives through your story too. Learn more about sharing your faith at findpeacewithgod.net. We're the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. On the next episode of Focus on the Family Radio Theater, Oliver Twist joins the Artful Dodger for a suspicious game. It's not a game I've ever seen before I came to London. Do as I say, Oliver, and you'll come to no harm. Harm? When he finally realizes what the Dodger is up to, will it be too late? Stop! Keep! Join the adventure next time as Focus on the Family Radio Theater presents the fourth episode of Oliver Twist. I know what you're going through. I've been there. Nobody else I know has been there. It's not easy being a veteran. Coming back from Iraq or Afghanistan, I had been so excited to come home. But it's harder than I thought. Not everyone understands that. Things at home may be as you left them. But you don't feel the same. Join us at communityofveterans.org. And connect to others who are going through the same thing. Because no one knows what it's like to come back unless they were there. Brought to you by Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America and the Ad Council. And we are back with more prayer and answers. Phone number here seven seven nine zero zero one six. If you'd like to join in the conversation, well, Steve, let's kind of turn the topic here since we are getting very close to um, our election. I'm not sure how many days away it is, but it is close. Um, what's up? What's at stake here on this on this next election? What you know? Do you can you tell us if 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 uh, we go this way, what's going to happen? If we go that way, what's going to happen? What's at stake here for us? Well, you know how, how how politicians tend to exaggerate the importance of electing certain sure. people. Sure. Um, uh, I think this time there's no exaggerations. <laughs> okay. And um, so it, it's the difference uh, between maintaining our freedom um, in, in many senses uh, of, of maintaining the value and the sacredness yeah. of life um, and... Um, the destruction of um, our, our society and our culture. Okay. So it w- seems like what you're saying is <laughs> the story about the little boy crying wolf, where we are right now is there actually is a wolf. Yeah, normally <laughs> the, the <laughs> politicians <laughs> invent this, yeah. cr- this crisis. But, but you're saying this is the real deal. Well, right everybody now. knows we're in a crisis. I mean, I, I'd like to hear from somebody who doesn't think we're in a crisis <laughs> okay. and, and doesn't think that there's, the, the, that there's a lot of danger ahead. Right. And they may disagree on which direction we go and whether we elect a Democrat or Republican. I don't want to – I'd rather s- uh, stick to the specific issue rather than uh, talk Democrat or Republican. But the whole concept of our culture uh, being uh, dismantled 
and you can see it on the streets of Chicago and Seattle and Portland um, and the whole uh, Black Lives Matter movement with the, their cultural Marxist philosophy and their advocacy of the destruction of the family, which is uh, many people are ignoring. That is a major part of um, their rationale. And along with our economic system and our taxation system and um, the ability to even uh, move. So, for example, in California, they're getting rid of uh, independent contractors and you have to be an employee um, in order to, to be employed. Uh, let me ask you this, because you mentioned a moment ago, um, particularly about destruction of the family. I mean, there's a lot of people that feel like the family is the problem, that if we could finally get rid of the family and have a social order where the professionals, the state, is raising the children. I mean, in Black Lives Matter, that's one of the things that they're particularly for is to, or if not remove the family, at least remove the family as we have always known it, which is a, a father and a mother uh, with children. Um, wh what, what do you, you know, is there an argument that maybe it would be a good thing to remove the family? I mean, with Black Lives Matter, they feel that it would be it would be wonderful for humanity if we could end the patriarchal system. Um, are they wrong? Yes, because God established an order and a design, and when we don't follow the order and design that God has established from the beginning, um, then uh, chaos uh, will begin to reign. And all you have to do is look at what happens what happens in our culture when we don't have a father and a mother at home. Then, then and Steve, why is it that they feel it would be a good thing? I mean, really, from their point of view, I don't, I don't necessarily think that these people are evil in their heart. They're fighting for something that they really believe in. They actually believe that if we could just get rid of God, the church, and the family, patriotism, um, and... Uh, uh, pro-life ministries, we could finally have a utopia. W why do they think that that would be um, a, a beneficial way to go? Well, first, because they think that a utopia can exist okay. in, our, in our world, and our a utopia can exist because we're inherently uh, sinful. All right, so whenever, ha have we seen historically where a society has removed God and all of the constraints of God? Um, and finally, you know, it was humanism. Finally, man was able to, you know, set his own course. Have we seen that happen? Sure we have. We've seen it in Russia. We've seen it in China. We've seen it in uh, Cambodia. All right. And so are you saying that those are not wonderful places to live? No. The, the, <laughs> that, that is why this, the 20th century was the most violent and war-ridden centuries with, with millions upon millions of people being massacred uh, by their governments oh. for not towing the line or, or having a different skin color or... Um, now, I was told that it was the church that caused all the wars, that the religious wars is what killed so many people. Are you saying it's that those who are atheists are the ones who, who have killed more? By the hundreds of millions. Yeah. Uh, in the 20th century, at least the tens of millions in the 20th century, but millions upon millions of people, even even today in communist China, uh, they are imprisoning uh, Uyghur uh, Muslims uh, by the hundreds of thousands. And, yeah. and uh, We still don't have a count on how many Mao killed, but there has been no one who has killed more more human beings than Mao in China, and yet that's looked upon as what we want here in the United States. We want to have a, 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 a cultural Marxism. And the first thing I wanted to do was destroy the family, and right. that's what they did. Yeah. They took the family out of authority and they placed the government in authority. And if you're, if y'all are thinking that, that, that we're crying wolf right now, I'd like you to do some research on something called critical theory and California education system. Uh, one of the things that they are that they are teaching in California is don't tell children, don't go home and talk to your parents about these things because they just won't understand. Um, they're doing everything they can to get the parents out of the lives of the children. Um, and I'm not exaggerating. 
uh, we we have come to the place where where the Soviet Union was back in the 1960s and 70s, where the family is the enemy and the state is the the ones who are um, uh, sanctioned to raise the children, so that we can make this ant colony, um, and and it's it's not a good direction to go. It never has been. In fact, World War One and World War Two were not because of Christians. World War One and World War Two were both because. Europe had removed God completely. They had pronounced the death of God, and they had removed God from their social structure. And those great massacres is what followed. And, and what they're trying to do is propagandize the children and give them an ideology that goes against what they're learning yeah. and against the traditional family. And in fact, this is nothing new. It began back in the 1960s. We began propagandizing the children back then. They, it took you know, this many years, 70 years, uh, to, to, to slowly turn our culture over to where we now are at the moment where we actually can um, become a, a, a totally atheistic country and finally remove all of God and godliness from our nation. And to me, that's what's at stake with this election. And I don't think we're crying wolf. Um, this, is, this is huge. Well, you can see the fruit on the streets and you can see it in our society, how it's crumbling and how people are so polarized yes. that they can't even talk to one another. And yes. Families are being split on the basis of politics. Yes. And there was a time, you know, where you, well, you would never have dreamed that somebody would say, we're taking your property, we're going to outlaw private ownership. And right now that is on the agenda. And, and, that, uh, and that's the first step to bringing a country into the uh, communist uh, or Marxist system, which is yes. where one of our parties is, is, is headed. Yes. Well, that's all the time that we have on this edition of Prayer and Answers. I'd like just with the final uh, half a minute that we have here to encourage the saints of God, would you please join a prayer meeting? Um, if, you're, if you're not going to do it now, you never will. There's never been a time that's more important. If you want to wear a mask and sit 12 feet away from each other, you can. But you can still be together in a room praying for our nation. And then also, would you go ahead and make sure you're registered to vote? Because uh, we're not crying wolf. This, as we just read in Peter, the end is near. Therefore, we must be sober-minded and in prayer. We'll see you next time, next week, with uh, more prayer and answers. Thank you for listening to Prayer and Answers presented each Saturday afternoon at 1.30. Tune in again next week at this same time for Prayer and Answers. Jesus.